Hello parents, so excited that we finally get to get started on our sewing projects. Um, I'm going to just kind of introduce you to a few little things that you need to know to help your kids get started. So some of you have new kits, some of you, most of you have um, partially done or started kits. And so I'm going to start you with a new kit just to show you some techniques and stuff, but you can start anywhere in the partial or not. So you get, um, you all have packets um, like this. In the packet will have a, a picture. That's why I gave everybody a packet so they know what they're looking at and making. And then you will have a, what I'm calling a stitch instruction guide. And then you also have a stitch guide specific for the kit. This one's the pig and it also has what colors you use and what is recommended. So just so you know, all my kits are made for uh, kids five and up. That means that you can do as simple as a running stitch, which I will show you what a running stitch is. Um, if they have trouble sewing or they're new at sewing. You also in your bags have gotten at least one stuffing bag. This will be enough stuffing maybe a little more but this will be enough for a stuffy um but so put that aside and the packet is a background fabric for piggy it's this pig fabric this will be for the end of class as well so let's put that aside and um then the thread and all these threads correspond to the different threads that go on to the kit so they, um, it's pretty easy because the lines kind of match, but um, I can also, I will also be guiding them. You will also, in your big bags, will have a, a hoop. The kids kind of know what these are. Um, if you're new to hoops, this is what helps you keep your, um, uh, your sewing taut and not getting all bunched up. So I will show you how to use that in a minute. And then also at least one needle and then a couple of, um, I have a couple of pins here I put in for you guys. I highly recommend pins, but you have at least one needle. I tried to put two or three needles for everybody so that if you lose a needle, then you have one. Um, so let's talk about the hoop. Um, I'm gonna show you how to put the hoop on to a kit. So these hoops are the plastic kind. And then that some of you might have a wooden kind and they're all different sizes, but they all work the same. Um, the, the ring without the hardware, without the screw goes on the underneath part of the fabric. The fabric goes on top and then the, the ring with the screw goes on top of the fabric. Let's start with the plastic hoop. The plastic hoop has, because most of the kids have plastic hoops, plastic hoop has a little weird lip. It says this side up printed on the one side where the lip is. The lip gets in the way, so you wanna make sure that that actually gets put on the table. And then you put your pattern or your the what you're working on, on top of where, kind of where you want it to be. And then you make sure you unscrew the screw, not too much. If it's too loose, it's uh, gonna be too loose putting it on. So, and then you put that over the, the basic hoop on the bottom, like that. Now I wanna tighten my screw. And then I want to pull. I want to pull all the fabric. What I'm doing is I'm, I'm just pulling up on the fabric and I'm tightening the screws tighter and tighter. This is a part that the kids will need help with. Some kids can do this on their own, but really, um, it takes a lot of strength in your fingers to make sure that that it's taut. I like to have a nice little drum. Some kids push down, and so I tighten it up as they're sewing. Um, because what happens is if they push down on it, it will start to, the thread starts to pull and it gets wrinkly looking. All right, so there we are. Now the pins come in handy um, because you can actually sew while you're, while you're sewing these stitches, you can sew this up to the back and it gets annoying and gets in the way. So a lot of times what I do is I fold up the excess and then I put I pin that up for them to keep it out of the way 
It just helps it make it easier for them. That's one reason I included the pins. So let's talk about our threads. So I have needles. So here's the pink thread that came with the pig. Um, this, this is a very long piece of thread. Um, I, all my kits primarily use what's called six, this is uh, embroidered floss, six stranded thread. So here I will show you, I'll zoom in. There's six strands on this thread. What I do for most of my students, the older students and some students actually know how to do it. And I will show you how to do that a second in a second. But the, the first way I do it is I actually split my threads in half so that they're three strands like this. Um, and then I double them again. So what I do is I take the middle of my thread, I open up with my fingers in the middle, three and three. Now, if you let it twist off, so what I do is I put my finger in and just let the um, it untwist on its own, you don't get tangles. Another way to do it is this way, but it starts to twist. So you have to go slow. If you go too fast, it's gonna knot up and twist. So like, I'm, I can't really do it anymore, so it's knotting up. So I'm gonna just untwist it until it separates. So now you have two pieces that you can use. So I'll put one aside for right now, and I'm gonna put one on a needle. These needles are really great because they're nice and sharp to get through the fabric, but also they have nice big, um, eyes so that you can put them through the needle and what I do is I match up the two ends I make the needle go in the middle and then I put a knot in the end now I'm going to show you how I do my knot I'm going to try to do it as slowly as possible I'll do a couple of them for you um, just so you can see how to do it but um, what you do is uh, this is called a quilter's knot. It's a very helpful knot. I make a circle. I grab and then I point the end to the point of the needle. And I grab the end with my needle hand. Now I have this and I wind it one, two, three. I hold the wind. I push it up and I pull it and you have a needle, a little knot. And that's a perfect knot for the back to start your fabric. So the reason that I split the thread is because when they're sewing, the needle never comes off. It's always gonna be working for them. Whereas if I had a piece of thread like this and I put a needle on this thread, I mean, a thread on this needle, let's see. And by the way, to thread it, the easiest way is to get a nice clean cut and then pinch it. There we go. Now you have to put your knot on the bottom and not double it. If you double it, then you have 12 strands. It's too thick. So to put your knot on the bottom and they have to only be stitching with that part. And then as they get shorter, they can pull up the the strand it's a, it takes more effort because they can pull the needle off easily and it takes a lot of thinking so if they can do that that's great we i try to encourage them to do that eventually so i'm going to put a knot in this one just to show you the knot again so i have my end i have my needle i'm going to make a circle and point them at each other i'm going to grab my end with my needle hand i'm going to go a couple of times around with a wind i'm going to grab the wind and then I'm gonna pull it up until you have a knot. All right, so let's do some stitching. Let me show you, show you some stitches for them that they can do um, that's really easy. Um, I'm gonna show some standard uh, kits that I have that most of the kids have. Here's the Fox. A lot of the kits have lines like this printed um, and those lines are just fur lines. They're just texture. So you match the match the color. So in the fox kit, there's an like a rusty orange, and you always start with from going from the bottom up. Um, they a lot of kids use their they can see it this way, which is fine. Let them start that way if that's the way it's easier. 
but they go from the bottom up, always reminding them to go to the bottom up so that the knot is hidden from the back side. Anything in the back is gonna be covered inside the pillow, so it, it totally works that way. Um, and then we're gonna go down and cover the line. And that's all you're doing. And the key is to keep close to the line you had just made. And that way you're not wasting thread because if I went way over here, my thread is gonna be wasted underneath. So the key is to start and do clusters of these little lines over and over again. Now, sometimes kids actually get uh, it, the thread twisted because these threads twist. And what will happen is they'll twist into a little, uh, a little slip knot kind of thing like this. And they, they'll say to me, oh, I'm, I'm, my knot stuck. All you have to do is pull on the loop and then pull the knot out. Um, so that's how the best way to do that. All right. So let me show you another stitch. Some of them have V patterns or W patterns in them. This is my little dragon guy and the V and W's are very easy as well. You start from the bottom up, always start from the bottom up and you're gonna go up one side of the line, down the other side of the line and up the other side and match the point. And then you go to your next your next one. Now, another thing to remember is, especially when you're starting off sewing um, and you're new to this and you're young, is that if your thread is up, you always go down. If your thread is down, you always go up. So a, a common mistake is actually this. And that is they go down when their thread is down and they should be going up and they get caught like this. So let me show you how to take that out. All you have to do is pull your thread, pull that thread tight against the fabric and it creates a hole and you stick your point in the hole and it comes right out. All right, so th when the thread is up, you go up, down, and when the thread is down, you go up. I always remind the kids that over and over again. All right, so that's a very easy little W um, for them. Okay, so I'm gonna show you actually with this one. So that's our little dragon. I'm gonna show you with the llama, um, the, two, uh, the two ways of doing outline stitches. Most of my kits have outline stitches. You can see all the dark green lines. Those are, that's the green thread, needs to go over the dark green lines. That means every single dark green line around here has an outline stitch. Okay, most of the time I use what's called a split stitch. I love the split stitch because the split stitch is um, actually, it's one of my favorite stitches. Actually, I'm gonna use the dragon um, because it adds texture to the thing and it's a really easy stitch. So let's, let's work on a split stitch. Split stitch is you go up on the corner, always where you start, you go down, and then the next time you go up, you go a bit away. If you make it too long, it doesn't look good. And then when you go back down, you go in the middle of the last stitch and split it open, split stitch. So let's do it again. Go here, go in the middle of the last stitch, and it's a split stitch. And we'll do another one. You go past it, you go in the middle of the last stitch, and it's a split stitch. And you can see, let's see, I'm going to find, uh, here's a great example of how textural the split stitch can be. And that's why, and it's a very easy stitch for them to do. All right, another stitch that is done is also very similar. It's called the back stitch. And that stitch is going to be we always start with our stitches at the corner and then you take your stitch and then you're going to go away from the stitch just like before, just like the split stitch, 
except this time you're going to go put your needle back in at the point. Essentially, you're drawing a line with stitches. So it looks a little more geometric and a little cold, a little not as fluffy, but for certain things like a rain or a dragon belly that's going to have like those kind of things look have a different texture. And so you're going to add different textures with your stitch. So let me show you again. You go past and you're going to go back in right here. Okay. So on this llama, I'm also going to show you um, the easiest stitch of all. And this is for my very, very beginner sewers. Every single thing on these kits can be stitched with this one stitch. It's called the running stitch. We will do a spiral with the running stitch. It's a very, very easy stitch and it's a quick stitch. I recommend that the kids who are more advanced that they don't do the running stitch partially because um, this is a, a very good use of their time and it's also a very soothing um, activity. It's been, studies have been shown that embroidery and cross stitch and all those types of things actually help anxiety and bring your blood, uh, your blood pressure down and help give you a meditative quality. So I highly recommend if they are advanced enough to do advanced stitches, not to rush through this. It's about making a beautiful product and not a quick product. Some kids like to do it quick. So let's start here. We're gonna start in the spiral. We'll start at the edge of the spiral. I'm gonna do this spiral and this is a running stitch. You just go up and down. And some people call it the dolphin stitch, but it's a very standard stitch. The great thing about this stitch and a great thing about the kits is that because the lines for the most part are uh, the same color or a similar color of what you're stitching, it doesn't really show up like you're doing something wrong or different. It just is a different look to the end product. So this is a great way for my five and six year olds, especially my beginner students who really need just to take the time to put their needles in and out and not think about anything else to be able to sew it, okay? And there you go. So let's talk about knots. Um, so if I'm gonna pretend I finished this one and I, um, I'm i gonna say, oh, I finished this thread. My rule of thumb for thread is never let your thread get any shorter than your finger. And that's how I tell them. If it's longer, if it's shorter than your finger, it's gonna be harder to knot. So what I do is, there's your finger length. And what they're gonna do is they're gonna cut their needle, their thread at the needle here, okay? And then they can split open their thread like this and have two pieces and then you tie a knot easily like a, just a simple double knot like a shoe. And then the key is not to let your threads be long and so you want to cut them so that they don't get in your way when you're sewing your next thing. So that's the easiest way to knot. Um, the other way to knot is let's say, let's pretend I finished this one and I had all this thread left and I don't want to waste all this thread by cutting off the needle and then all this thread's gone. So I will cut it at finger length and then I can knot the end of my extra thread. I will split it open and then I will tie it. And most of the kids can do this. If they can tie their shoe or they can tie a double knot, they can do this just like that. Um, and then they just pick it up and start. So if you have any questions, um, please email me or um, with pictures or with video or with just a written 
questions and I will try to get back to you as soon as possible. Um, there are a few things that are gonna come up with knotting, like things that get knots and things you have to take out. And if you are struggling with that, please don't hesitate to ask me for help. I can guide you through on doing that. It's not that hard, it's just figuring it out the first time is the hardest part. And I'm happy to do that. And then um, we're gonna start our Zoom classes next week. Even though it's spring break, I'm still gonna start them. Um, my goal is to have two Zoom classes a week so that we, I can guide them with their projects and get them going. And then we will move on from there. If they do finish their um, stuffy, uh, they will be able to get another stuffy. So we're gonna do the same amount of weeks as we had scheduled. So if they finish a stuffy, we can, they can pick another one to start after they're finished with that one. That's part of the fee for the class and I'm more than happy to drop off another stuffy um, kit for them. Uh, if they don't, you can use my videos and you can still email me. It just won't be available for Zoom afterwards. You don't have to have a sewing machine to finish these kits. I am going to be putting YouTube videos on of me making a whole entire animal from start to finish. And you will see that I do it by hand. A lot of them use the sewing machine in my class because I want to introduce them to sewing machine, but it's not necessary to use a sewing machine. But um, I will show them uh, via a video how to use a sewing machine. But it's not, like I said, it's not necessary. Um, and then the other thing you may want is a chopstick or two to help stuffing the animals. So if you have a chopstick laying around, save it for stuffing those animals once we make them up. All right, happy stitching, have fun. Also, if you would like to um, order some kits for yourselves or family members or anything, please do so. Use my student code, it's student price. Um, coupon code $15. You can more, more than happy to do that. I also have stuffing and hoops on the site for sale and I can deliver them. Um, they're Like I said, they're great for keeping your mind busy. Um, and I also wanted to just touch on and recommend that they listen to audiobooks or music during their sewing time. Um, we have found that audiobooks are one of the best things, or we actually have some podcasts that we listen to as well, and they love them. So it's a great way for them to take in some creative uh, listening while doing this, and it distracts their um, minds, and they don't get distracted from the sewing. They actually get more done by listening to audiobooks. And I'm hoping to hear from you guys all soon.